Hi everyone, welcome to this next session of Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q Blast. My name is Dr. Matt Alvin. I'm an incoming medical intern going into radiology. Let's get started. So for this question, what should jump out to you immediately is, we've got a picture here. This is not just any picture, this is a CT scan. So you know it's gonna be one of my favorites as an incoming radiologist. So let's get started on this. A 66 year old man is brought to the emergency department after recent discharge following a Whipple's procedure for pancreatic cancer performed seven days prior. So big things from that right there is this guy had pancreatic cancer, he had a Whipple's procedure, which hopefully you know is basically trying to surgically remove that pancreatic cancer, and when was it performed? Not years ago, not months ago, but seven days prior. So this is a guy that recently just got discharged after surgery. That's big, you gotta keep that in your mind. He has a six hour history, again, not days, not weeks, but just a six hour history of worsening shortness of breath and sudden onset chest pain. Bad news, especially in a post-op patient, you gotta be concerned about some serious complications that could have happened. He's given oxygen supplementation, which, does it help? It says it moderately improves his saturation. Notice they use that word moderately. It doesn't improve it like that, like he's back to normal, and it doesn't not improve it at all, just moderately improve. Helps you to think about differential. A contrast-enhanced CT scan of the chest is shown. So note, it's not just a CT scan. You've got contrast enhancement. Why should we order it with contrast enhancement? It's gotta be important for this question. And then it says, which of the following is the most likely origin of the abnormality seen on the CT? So then you wanna take a look at the CT before you even look at those answer choices. And this is where some basic understanding and interpretation of these CT scans can help you out. But hopefully, just based on the patient presentation, you have a pretty good idea of what's going on here. And if not now, you will after reading this question, you'll be prepared for test day. So after giving that image a few lookovers, let's now go to the answer choices, okay? So again, the question wants us to know the most likely origin of the abnormality seen on CT. All the answer choices are veins, okay? So we know the abnormality is from some sort of vein. Well, let's take a look. We've got basilic vein, brachial vein, cephalic vein, femoral vein, and great and lesser saphenous veins. All right, so do we know our anatomy here? Do we know where all these are at? What can cause the abnormality on CT? Let's try it out right now. Take a few moments, select what you think is the best answer. Okay, great. So the correct answer for this is choice D, the femoral vein. So what's going on in this patient? Hopefully you knew from the question stem. If not, hopefully you saw on the CT scan, which we're gonna see in a moment. This guy is suffering from a pulmonary embolism, one of the worst complications you can hope to have after surgery. And sadly, this is what this guy's got. So what do we see? Some key points about a PE. Well, we get a CT scan with contrast because that contrast will allow us to see if there's filling defects in the arteries, okay? Remember that if we see a filling defect, that's going to mean we have some sort of embolus. All right, and it says here that greater than 90% of PEs originate from the deep veins of the lower limbs. That's something you gotta know. That's basic background about what's a thrombus, where does a thrombus come from, the difference between a DVT and a PE. Well, a PE is simply that thrombus that came up and came into the lungs to cause this patient presentation. The only deep vein of the lower limb listed in those answer choices is the femoral vein. This is why you've gotta know your anatomy. This is why this is step one, basic science concept here. The risk of embolism increases as that clot extends proximally, which means we have deeper veins, the more distal portions of our arms or our legs, but if we get into a proximal deep vein, it's going to increase that risk of embolism. So let's take a look on our CT scans here. So what I have for you here on your right, when you take a look at these images at home, on your right we have a normal CT scan of basically the chest, the heart, and we have some labeling on there that shows you where that pulmonary artery is, the pulmonary trunk splitting into the right and left pulmonary arteries. And on the left side, you see where we've circled specifically the filling defects. And again, because this is contrast enhanced, 
the wider portion of all of those vessels, so that pulmonary artery is normal, but what we have circled that looks darker and not light, that's our thrombus that is now moved from the lower leg, okay, where it's called a thrombus. It has embolized to now be called an embolus in the lungs. That's what you see there. Not just one, that big dark circle, but there's two other smaller dark circles. So, big takeaways from this problem. Know your anatomy, deep versus superficial veins. PEs, they occur most commonly from lower limb deep vein clots. The brachial vein is our upper limb deep vein for you to know on test day. The femoral vein is its lower limb deep vein for you to know as well. Those other answer choices, all superficial veins. Know your anatomy, biggest takeaway. It helps you to identify this complication in patients so that you know you're gonna be able to get this right on test day, get your higher score. Thanks for joining me here today with Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q-Blast. My name is Dr. Matt Alvin. Good luck with studying, and I'll see you next time.